Thank you so much for joining us for the Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge 2017, our 10th year. So we are halfway through our finalist presentations and they have been truly amazing. So thank you guys for sharing and we're looking forward to uh, five more great presentations. Um, so without further ado, let's get the, the second half started. So our next Young Scientist finalist is from Boca Raton, Florida. Let's welcome Devin to the stage. How are you, my friend? Good. Excellent. That is for okay, you. Okay, thank you. Have fun. Good luck. Okay. Cancer is an uncontrolled rapid growth of cells that forms a tumor. There were 14 million new cancer cases worldwide in 2012, and this is expected to rise to 21.7 million new cancer cases by 2030, costing a total of $458 billion. Five-year survival rates are highly varied between countries, and in Asia, 27% of cancer patients die within the first year, and 45% have financial catastrophe. Pathology, or more specifically histopathology, is a study of how tissue changes as a, changes as a result of a disease such as cancer. In cancer diagnosis, histopathology under a 40X microscope is a critical part. This is an example of what a pathologist would see when viewing a tumor under a microscope. In the United States, there's one pathologist for 18,000 people. In Mozambique, there's one for 6.25 million. These ratios could be clear drivers of differences in five-year survival rates by country. The demand for biomarker tests, as well as the amount of cancer patients, is on the rise, while the agreement of diagnosis between expert pathologists is only 75.3%. Automated analysis of high-resolution slide images is coming, but it won't be cheap. So my goal was to create a low-cost slide scanner optimized for deep learning that would increase the accuracy and speed of cancer diagnosis. By, by focusing on using a deep learning image classifier, it's able to be built for a much lower cost. In 2015, my, I tested 101 step promoters and I was able to achieve cellular level movement very easily. In 2016, I wanted to test the imaging capabilities of, a, of microscope cameras on a low cost XYZ platform. And I was able to achieve comparable, comparable results with a $250,000 slide scanner with the images from my machine being on the top. The goal of my first 3M prototype was to minimize vibration, which was impacting my images. The vibra However, it was very stiff, but 3M silicon lubricant saved the day. <laughs> it could still be improved, so I optimized it for a Raspberry Pi camera, which is low cost, and, use, and optimized it for linear rails for much smoother movement. Originally, I used image contrast values to focus my images. However, it was unreliable. So through research, I found NASA solved this problem on the Mars rover by using the largest JPEG image file size as their focused image. I used a Raspberry Pi and the REST API to be able to control my machine from anywhere just using an internet connection. My last challenge was low-cost LED lighting as it had to be consistent throughout the whole slide. So I used a high-powered LED and 3M Envision diffuser film to maintain this consistency, and it worked great. This is a demonstration of my machine performing autofocus code, and it ends on a fully focused image. After the focus code is performed, it then performs scanning code, which captures overlapping images and displays them as thumbnails on the bottom of the screen. Using Google's TensorFlow and a NVIDIA 1080 graphics card, I was able to produce a deep learning image classifier. It's able to classify various types of cells, including tumor cells, fat cells, germinal cells, normal cells, and red blood cells. Google's made it easy. I simply run this command to get the neural network. This is a graph of the accuracy of my neural network off of limited training data. I was able to achieve 90% accuracy. By combining low-cost slide scanning technology with a deep learning image classifier, I'm able to produce a map of cell types to provide a second opinion for expert pathologists, as well as be an accurate primary source of diagnosis in developing countries. I'd like to thank Discovery Education 3M and my mentor for all their help during the summer mentorship program. And my inspiration for this project comes from my grandfather who passed away from lung cancer six years ago. And there's lots of work ahead, but I feel like we can make a difference. Thank you.
Devin, great work. Uh, so my question is, why wouldn't someone adopt this right now? I think you, you have images that you compared to a quarter million dollar uh, device and yours is a, approximately $1,000. What's the uh, what's the next step? What's the reason not to adopt right now? Um, I mean, current current in its current state, um, it's pretty low cost. The materials I've used, it costs about eight hundred sixty eight dollars, which is much lower than two hundred fifty thousand dollars. However, it's also um, inaccurate currently. I, I mean, it could be improved um, using higher quality parts such as metal instead of acrylic and machining parts instead of three D printing them. Devin, great work. This was um, very much reflective of our experience with you over the last couple of days, and so thank you. Um, my question is uh, to ask you to elaborate a little bit more on your relationship with your 3M mentor and how that person was able to help you overcome any obstacles that you had along the way. So throughout the summer, um, John, my mentor, has provided me with helpful ideas that to just think about, really. Um, and he's like, okay, maybe you could try this, you could test this, and it actually really helped in that the diffuser film, which I used to light my sample, which is a critical part of my machine, he actually recommended trying diffuser film, um, reflective tape, and I tried all of these and ended up um, finding diffuser film worked really well. Um, amazing job, Devin. I mean, it was really great. <clears throat> With machine learning projects, we often hear uh, about overfitting and how that may prevent your device, uh, prevent any device from being accurate. How did you prevent this? How did you address this in your project? Well, to train my ne network, I used a already trained neural network um, that was trained on like cats, dogs, you know, just everyday items. And I basically retrained it using my folder of images of different cell types. And it basically went through and changed um, how a neural network works is there's a decision making tree process and each decision is worth a different amount, like for example, like a weight, um, like how important is this decision into the final idea of what this image is. And I basically used my images, retrained the data and got a whole new, got a brand new neural network. Devin, I've done astro and microbiology research and you have impressed me with this product. So that is a really wonderful job. What else, what other uh, applications do you think that this has? So this could be expanded to things beyond cancer since it's using a neural network and slide scanning technology. Anything really a pathologist does under a microscope looking at a slide, let's say for um, infectious diseases or um, looking at blood samples, the same thing could be applied to my machine. Fantastic job, uh, as you've heard from everyone. Um, I'm just a, a chemist, <laughs> just a chemist. Um, so maybe you could help me out a little bit by elaborating a bit more on when you talked about autofocus code. Maybe you could just elaborate on that a bit and okay. let that translate that into something I can understand. Mm -hmm. So basically when you're taking pictures, you want it to be focused, which there's a specific focal length for every camera, which is the distance away it has to be from what you're taking a picture of. Basically, I measured the image contrast values, which is basically the difference between every single pixel added up together. And I use these values, whichever value was the highest is obviously the most detailed because every image has the um, you know, most difference. And as you get less focused, images start to blend and blur. So this worked, but it was pretty unreliable. So NASA actually used JPEG image file size, which is a compressed PNG file. So depending on the amount of detail, it'll be less compressed, meaning a bigger file size. So I picked the biggest file size, which is the focused image. Yep. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. Of all the things that you've done with, with your work so far, what has personally for you been the most impactful? I mean, I think for the project, it's just been seeing the whole thing work. Like when I first was able to turn on the light and look through the microscope at the screen and see that image working, that was just really a really great moment for me because I felt that all, all the effort I put into it actually meant something. Bravo, really, congratulations. Um, I'm wondering about usually in, in processes like this and in research, we often hit walls at points in time where we get stuck and think, okay, what am I going to do now? Did you have that experience and what was it? Yeah, so I spent the whole summer working on this new prototype. 
one thing I forgot to do was the light. <laughs> so I was done. Oh. <laughs> You did a great job. How are you feeling? Good. That was really good. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Another round of applause. Thank you.